uh, tenor saxophone. And I kind of made a spontaneous decision. My father's a musician, and um, well, like, we grew up in Santa Cruz, California. And my father had a gig on the Pacific Garden Mall with this group, and it was outdoors. My parents were divorced, so my dad would get me one day a week, drive me down to the mall. I'd help him set up his, his instruments, uh, vibes and piano. And then when I was, when I was quite young, he had a, a little chair that I would sit on, and I'd watch the band play. And what happened was, I was 12 years old, I was in junior high school, I was doing bad in a photography class, and it was the last day to transfer, and I said, I want to transfer to beginning orchestra, because my best friend was in beginning orchestra. My dad asked me what instrument, and I said, tenor saxophone. And I think it was because the guy in his band, you know, was a really charismatic player. He was like a hippie, wore tie-dye shirts, and big beard, and he played these kind of wild, frenetic solos that would get the audience, you know, really enraptured. And I remember one time looking in the bell of his saxophone, and there was like a pool of condensation with a cigarette butt floating in it. So I think for some reason, as a 12-year-old, all that stuff seemed cool, and I said saxophone. A paying gig. I remember, I remember the first gig I did was actually with Kenny Wallison, who played here yesterday with Bill Frizzell, and it was at the Capitola Spaghetti Feed, a, big, a festival for the Begonia, a fundraiser for the Capitola Begonia Festival. We only got paid in food though. Probably the first real paying gig was with my father, um, playing in his band, which was a combination of tips and, and, and salary when I was maybe uh, 12 years old. Well, um, I, you know, I was living with my mother and she was in the Santa Cruz area, but my father lived in Aptos and they had a reputation for having a really great high school jazz band. And I was in, I was, you know, in that summer between um, uh, elementary school and, and or, or junior high school and high school, and I met a couple of the guys who played in the band and they were really good, really good players. So I, I switched to that high school and used my father's address and the band director was Don Keller. So he had a bunch of Ellington charts. In fact, he had like a big book, a black book of Ellington charts. And this was before those kind of charts were readily available. He had gotten them because he's a trumpet player and had been in the army with Bill Berry, who's a trumpet player who'd been in Ellington's band. And um, Bill had kind of bequeathed these charts to Don. Um, Bill had a group in LA, the LA Big Band, but he, he bequeathed these charts to Don and we, and we were playing them. So, it was an incredible experience at 14 years old to be confronted with like Cottontail and Diminuendo and Crescendo and Blue and Warm Valley and I mean it was, I, you know, I had no idea how lucky I was. And it was one of those situations where there was a really good feeder junior high school that I hadn't gone through but, but the other kids, most, most of them had gone through that and um, it, was, it was a tremendous, a tremendous uh, time because the high school band was really great. We were playing great material. There was a really good junior college band um, that Ray Brown was teaching at. Not the bass player, but the trumpet player. He was a great educator. So there was just a lot of young, really talented players. And there were places to play. Like my father, his group was playing five or six days a week. And we could go sit, to, sit in there and, and, and other places um, were active. And the Coamba Jazz Center had opened maybe about 10 years before that. So we were able to go here, like McCoy Tyner, uh, Elvin Jones, you know, Cedar Walton, and so on and so forth every week. It was a great environment to grow up in. Well, they had a big, it had a big impact on, on the scene there, as you can imagine. I mean, literally being able to go every Monday night and hear um, our heroes play music, it was, it was amazing. And, and the fact that you know, they kept it together and they had a great business model and they had classes I was in. For a while they had you know, youth classes that I was in, ensembles and harmony classes and stuff like that. It was, it was great. This is Donnie McCaslin. If you want to check out more videos, go to jazztimes.com.